Hello everybody and good morning. Alright, so today I wanted to talk about a game that really does not get a whole lot of chatter despite being a bit of a cult favorite. Um, and uh, specifically how I think, well, maybe the uh, crafting in uh, T.O. Reborn will end up getting redone, courtesy of this thing. So uh, basically if you've never heard of Vagrant Story, well, first of all, the intro is friggin' awesome and surprisingly... Despite the absolute chaos going down, yes, this more or less all happens, not exactly in this order. Um, but specifically, uh, you see this intro here where they're just basically Legoing together their uh, random weapons and things like that? That is that is the large crux of this game. See, the Vagrant Story, I, like, like I mentioned before a few times, it's like... Uh, your, your character is the equivalent of like a James Bond in uh, the FFT universe, more or less. Um, yeah, the mechanics are way more T.O. Remake. Well, I suppose it's kind of the other way around if you think about it. But um, basically, that's that's the premise there. You're, you're a character running a solo, like, <laughs> they're comically overpowered. That's It's even brought up in the story how unfair it is to everybody else in the story. Actually, I think one of my favorite moments in this game is just when you see a couple of the boss characters like, dude, that guy just, like just took on a giant why are we still here <laughs> um but anyway so yeah it gets compared to metal gear a lot because surprisingly despite being a ps1 game they uh they actually uh have like facial animations and really good cinematography and stuff in this um even though for the most part it's like a resident evil type scenario like you're running around collecting keys fighting enemies avoiding enemies um learning weaknesses and that kind of thing but like I said before, there's a lot of very in-depth mechanics going on here, and actually a lot of stuff that you later saw uh, come back in other ways. So, for example, there's a lot of layers to this room here, so... You know, it helps if I hit the right button here, but... Um, if we go over to, uh, to Fixate here, uh, one of the, uh, kind of helping spells here, this later came back in, uh, Tactics Ogre as a way to tie people to the ground. In this one, it is a uh, it is a way to uh, stop moving platforms from moving. So we test our jump a little bit. We go forward. We jump on the platform and completely miss because I'm bad at jumping in this. Yeah, the jumping is a little wonky. Thankfully, these uh, jumping puzzles don't come up that often. This just happens to be the save that I had on hand. Now, you may notice from the music, from the atmosphere. Yeah, this is absolutely an FFT sequel. A very unofficial <laughs> FFT sequel in many ways, um, to the point that it doesn't really share its name. It doesn't, like, in terms of visual stuff, aside from a couple of reference items, um, for the most part, it doesn't even, like, it's, it definitely seems to share more with, uh, you know, with uh, Tactics Ogre Remake than it does FFT. For example, Brimstone Hail, that looks pretty familiar there. Uh, we had Ruination and uh, Scythe on, uh, on the uh, spear there. Um, actually, you may notice the targeting system could look a little bit familiar if you've uh, played Parasite Eve before. Uh, because in many ways, this was kind of like, uh, as I understand, this was almost put together as a tech demo for what they could do with Parasite Eve. They're just like, here, just go do this cool thing and, you know, let us know what you come up with and uh, we'll maybe make a game out of something like that. So, like, technically, you can just run up here and you can make that jump, or you can just snipe these boxes out of the way, and you can use your abilities to lock this thing in place. And, you know, suddenly you've made it out of the room a far easier way. But, um, but yeah, there's, like, mechanics on mechanics on mechanics going on in this game. Um, a surprising amount of which ended up getting redone later for, uh, for T.O. Remake. So, like, for example, the armor system is, uh, is very similar. Uh, actually, one thing that if you've played the uh, Japanese version of T.O. before, this right here will end up looking extremely similar to you. Um, let's see, this guy is undead. I think he technically counts as undead. I'm not sure. We'll just uh, go ahead and go with uh, with a backup anti-undead crossbow here. Yeah, doesn't this feel like the, uh, uh, like the uh, uh, solo uh, of uh, T.O. right now? So here, I need this one very oddly specific anti-racial weapon kind of situation. But, like, let's say we look at this guy and we see that uh, he's, uh, he's got a piercing weapon, he's uh, light-affiliated, and he's technically counted as evil. So, you know, we go back to our, uh, to our gear and we see, okay, what, uh, what potentially could we have put together to deal with this so far? Well, honestly, probably not a whole lot, but uh, we'll probably just go ahead with our strongest thing over here. Um, 
so if we look at these affinities, by the way, again, this might look pretty familiar. You've got uh, one kind of specific damage type, you got a specific affinity type, um, and then you have essentially the uh, different racial classes and how well they're, uh, they're scaling against those particular things, as well as a smattering of random stats. With a few extra little mechanics like uh, durability points and phantom points, which are just kind of like uh, different versions of scaling in a way. But this is the part I was talking about might be very familiar if you've played the Japanese version of TO before, where you get into debuff wars with people. Um, more than likely, this is probably where that, uh, that particular uh, uh, little brand of way too many buffs going on uh, potentially came up, uh, came up from. Um, basically... Yeah, it's it's a very similar situation where sometimes fights will just run into three or four rounds of uh, you just got to break each other down until eventually someone gets the upper hand. It's like based on different equipment, based on different moves, uh, you can move at different speeds. Uh, Mr. Ashley here is way the hell faster than uh, than pretty much everybody else in the game, barring a few units, so you can usually end up getting the upper hand with enough spam. Um, but definitely there's certain enemies that you just end up avoiding consistently because, well, you know, this kind of crap just gets to be something that you don't want to deal with after a while. So then eventually, you know, you break somebody down, you can start doing actual damage to them. You get a very, uh, uh very, uh, Legend of Dragoon feeling, uh, combo system. Actually, surprisingly, this had a lot more to it than the LOD system. But... You get the general idea here. I don't really want to sit here showing off this guy's debuff spam for an hour, so we're we're gonna go. I'm just gonna go go ahead and leave this way. I keep failing to parry that guy. Like, you know how uh, how Dark Souls got praised for parries and all that. So imagine if you could parry everything in a variety of different ways. That's yet another mechanic in this. Man, I completely don't remember where anything is in this game. But well, that's fine. I th I believe this is the way to the closest workshop, because what I wanted to show off is um is yeah the workshop mechanic. Yeah, th there we go. There's an uphill kind of deal. Let's go ahead and exit out of here. I mean, it you can pretty much immediately feel the uh, the sort of like Dark Souls level design with the Resident Evil enemy placements, with just all kinds of other things going on, and and I have entered into a Demon's Souls area. Okay, th this is like an infinite field that you gotta know the uh, the puzzle for. Alright, screw it. We're just gonna show off how these uh, how these items work without going to the workshop. That's fine. So, we can't assemble here, but we can disassemble stuff, which basically allows us to show off the same thing. It's so, like, let's say we've got this mace over here, right? This was just a random one that I found. And it takes it apart into a mace head and a type of handle. Um, or you go over to this thing, and it's like, okay, it'll take, uh, take, uh, whatever the main firing mechanism is, as well as the ammunition, as well as whatever gems attached to it. And you can mix and match these characteristics of these different, uh, weapons into, well, a better weapon. You, like, legoing your weapons together at a workshop is kind of how this all breaks down. You find weapons, you break them, you custom make another one, and that's how you wind up with spears... And, you know, a spear named fan, uh, named Stabtastic, or, you know, a crossbow named Gun. Because it was a blunt crossbow, and, um, you know, I decided to give it something else. Um, but then at the same time, you modify them with gems. So, like, you, you can change their different affinity types, you can change just all kinds of different random stuff on there. It's so like, let's say you want fire affinity on there, or you want a, you want the ability for your shield to be able to uh, to have an avoidance for the numbness ability, which is like paralysis, kind of, sort of. You may notice that uh, this 20% chance to evade is weirdly similar to the uh, the way that you could add your um, your avoidance to a particular um, a particular debuff type in uh, Tactics Ogre as well, just like specifically on the, on the shields. So it was gems in this. Um, and you get, like, specifically anti-whatever type of uh, bonuses that you can put on stuff. The more you use a weapon against a particular thing, the better it gets against it, you know. But, generally speaking, like, so many of the mechanics uh, came from that. Uh, including the uh, the weird thing where you would uh, go and, you know, you would read grimoires in French of all things. Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this French? I can't fucking read French. 
um, in order to uh, to go learn different magical uh, magical abilities. And yes, the first time you read it is a free cast. Um, now, it a lot of the mechanics they seem to definitely uh, you know copy pretty much uh, uh, pretty much wholesale. However, uh, there's um, when it came to the crafting, it definitely did seem to come a little bit out of left field, all things considered. Um, because, it, you know, it just seemed like seemed like it was designed specifically for, like, a roguelike or something, you know, you know, a permadeath kind of deal. Um, so why exactly would they end up doing something like that? See, I have, I have a theory on this, because I think what ended up happening here was that they actually did want to copy the uh, crafting system from this as well. But they probably uh, ran into a mechanical issue where they couldn't. Um, also, I'm trying to figure out why exactly this guy is uh, only targeting certain areas. Also, another cool thing is that yeah, any uh, kind of like burst abilities and stuff like that, you can actually just uh, <laughs> uh, you do something like that there, where you uh, target somebody in the middle, and those burst abilities will just hit every limb on their body uh, individually, which is pretty neat. Also, this won't work on him, but it will teach the spell. There you go, one free cast, and then immediately you learn the ability, even though it missed, but that's fine. And now we know Drain Mind. Again, looks very familiar, I'm, you know, I'm certain there. So, you kind of get where, where I'm coming at from this one. A lot of these spells probably look pretty similar. A you know, a lot of these classes are stuff that you could be go and become in TO. Um, a lot of the weapon classes probably look very familiar as well. Um, again, when they were making FFT, like it's you kind of got the uh, sense that there was a lot going on there in terms of ideas. However, it seemed like they wanted, like judging from interviews and stuff like that, it seemed like they wanted to be out of that little ecosystem as much as possible, as quickly as possible. Um, so, like when you like when when you're looking at a you know, when, when they're going back and talking about previous things that they worked on and all that, usually when, uh, whenever you see, like, let's say, FFT mentioned, they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, we worked on the world, and we worked with these people, and it was a good thing for the career, and then when it comes to, let's say, they're talking about, a uh, original Tactics Ogre or something, they're like, yeah, this is the greatest freaking thing ever, you know, when do I get to make another one? <laughs> so, there's this, this sense that, yeah, it, it was much more of a passion project, and in many ways, Vagrant Story feels like the sort of in-between, like where they felt like they finally had the play to be able to make this world that they wanted, because this is in the same world, and it's interesting that they even bothered to put a first-person mode that you can just sort of pause and look around and, you know, just appreciate the crazy detailed world design in this place. I mean, they literally will detail out every single friggin' room, like... I think there may actually be more more or equivalent to amounts of details on just every little aspect of this uh, of this game than freaking Bloodborne at times. Like even all the uh, the doors are barred off for particular reasons. Like you fight a like let's say early on there's a, a night patrol that you may run into a few times and then there's a sort of undead outbreak in that area and they a lot of the people that are there end up getting cursed. And then you come back later and you find basically all of the knights and soldiers and stuff you run into are equipped in unique ways. So you go back to that area later and you suddenly find people using the same loadouts as those guys shambling around as zombies. It's just like, it's just so cool to see so much care put into everything, you know? I mean, basically, if you wanted the equivalent of a, a like a Dark Souls or Bloodborne, but you wanted to still have it as an SRPG or Dungeon Crawler, kind of whatever you'd call this... Um, like, it, it's kind of like an SRPG Risen Evil in some ways. It's so weird to describe. Because... Oh, there we go. There's one of those knights. Perfect timing, sir. Sorry, it's been a while since I played this, so... Uh... Oh, and if you're curious, uh, yeah, you can actually uh, infinitely chain your attacks. Actually, d speed runs of this game are an absolute treat to watch, because it's just like watch me parry 48 attacks in a row <laughs> I'm not particularly good at this especially when there's you know the usual second screen input lag but either way it's it's such a treat of a game to play you know I mean you get into big open areas like this and 
You can just hear the birds in the background, but there's no music anymore. It doesn't have to have a spooky atmosphere. This is just a destroyed city. It's a ruin. There's not a whole lot of activity. There's some patrols around, but, you know, that's fine. But let's say, you know, now I'm, I'm noticing I'm fighting this guy. You know, kind of starting to run a little bit behind on my uh, health here. Like right now I'm chaining two abilities to uh, regenerate uh, health and... Uh, actually, do I have regenerate health on? Let's see. Let's, uh, let's check this out real quick. So, let's see. We got heavy shots, so it just gives 70% uh, bonus. Oh, no. We want gain life instead of gain magic. Whoops. Um, you get instill, so basically it just makes whatever you're fighting stick on your weapon. Don't ask how that works. It's fine. Um, or like this one right here where you... Uh, uh, you end up sharpening your weapon by somehow hitting their bones well enough with it. Um, or something like Raging Ache, which, again, the speedrun relies on, wherein you specifically let yourself get to low health, um, and then repeatedly counterattack everything with a Reflect Damage ability uh, while using Raging Ache for uh, just insane damage. Um, so, again, it's just beautiful logic in terms of how any of this is supposed to even remotely work. And it, it just feels so good. But, again, the crafting is a crazy, just, it, okay, it's, I feel like in, in many ways, I know I've brought up Legend of Mana before, but if we're talking about, if we're talking about uh, Tactics Over Reborn specifically, I'm really expecting there to be something similar in terms of, um, like, they took the, took some of the crazier mechanics and just completely redid them. It, I guess less redid them, but retooled them using whatever was there. So, like, there was a golem weapon and magic crafting system in that one. Ah, oh, man, I'm really bad at the, uh, at the parries on this. Well, ruinate this guy, I suppose. And, uh, I don't know, I don't really know what this is gonna help me with, but whatever, screw it. I suppose we should actually recover here a little bit. But okay. Oh, by the way, funny note on the uh, scaling for heal. Um, it ends up going up as your risk goes up. Uh, it starts off at about uh, 40, ends up going to about 60, um, then ends up scaling up to about 120 as uh, as your risk goes up. What is uh, what does that sound familiar uh, familiar to you with? Um, oh, nice. Yeah, th those roots are actually pretty rare. Um, by the way, it may say, "What do you, what do you mean? It's uh, it's scaling up, uh, scaling up by 40." When I used it in a fight, it started up at 160. Well, if you put your weapon away, you end up uh, scaling uh, scaling yourself down to a further level where you're just kind of in this rest mode here, and then you just go to recovery, and then yeah, it's like it's like 40 to 50. Anyway, again, just so much stuff that uh, that seemed to come out of left field was strictly because of uh, because of uh, you know this awesomeness right here where the hell am I is this even remotely close to a workshop or am I just wandering around for no reason All right root inverse I I believe that's um, I believe that's a new game plus door uh, which by the way root inverse if that sounds familiar yeah that also started here the um, uh, the logo for the game is uh, is exactly uh, uh, the uh, the Angel Knight item. And I'm not actually sure if I missed the guy there or if it was because I hit the wall. But And if you're curious, yes, depending on what uh, stuff you equip, uh, or d what skills you equip, uh, you actually uh, have different animations for your combo. Um, I just happen to like using multiple of the same ability, so whatever. Alright, so armor system again very kind of similar uh, if you noticed in the stats earlier this is actually when we uh, if I'm not mistaken the first time that we actually started seeing the uh, uh, the attack slash strength slash in split yeah down there at the bottom um, and as an interesting note you remember those like two pages or whatever else of um, of manual that we saw back in, uh, in back in tactics ogre and why it, why I keep saying saying it needed a Vagrant Story manual? Okay, so it has one that says the most important facts, right? You would assume, like, what was the, the TO version of this? Like, f four quick pages? Yeah, 21. 21 pages of just different mechanics that are just the simple version. You get 11 pages just on the map. Uh, let's see, the simple map version is only five pages. 
Uh, how do arms and armor work? Oh, here's 20 pages of description on all that stuff. Um, oh, ha puzzle cubes? You're going to need 15 pages on the different types of puzzle cubes. Uh, break arts? Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Five pages on that. You just level up the skill. You, you do the levels. Equipping a defensive ability. It's three buttons. Whatever. Eight pages. Uh, chaining abilities? That's going to take another ten. So, yeah. It explains how stuff can be ineffective, or how you want to combo them, or different timings that you want to use them. Um, how you learn different magics and things. How you get books. How books are somewhat randomized. Like, for example, my first time uh, playing through this, I ended up getting Heracles pretty early. That's kind of the equivalent of, like, Strengthen from T.O. Um, where... Again, your equipment and your your person are two different things. So, like, for example, you boost your physical strength. Uh, it, you know, it boosts your kind of maximum potential, so to speak. Also, by the way, you got to love how the enemies will actually make use of the terrain here. Um, like, they'll actually do puzzles and things. Um, God, this game is so cool. Also, apparently I've just circled around on myself. Okay, I don't know where this friggin' warehouse or whatever is. We're going to hop over to the other side and see, I want to say, on the other end of Little Italy Town over here, there actually is a, that there actually is a thing. And actually, I want to say I can probably stun this guy, maybe? Stun this guy to make him go away? I don't know. Do I have anything for this? Yeah, don't need affinities. What do we got here? Do we got anything to stop you? Gravity warp. I don't even know what this does. Sure. Do whatever that is. <laughs> oh. I mean, that looks cool. Whatever. You know. Whatever. That'll do. Dang it. Go away. I am trying to do puzzles. And I'm trying to jump in the water. That was on purpose. Don't question me. All right, any time now, platform. Thank you. And then if I wanted to go ahead and make sure that he couldn't come back, now you fixate it in place, and oh man, I I love this game. It's weird because I've played it a bunch, but I've never actually finished it because I have no idea where the iron key is. <laughs> and I've just been too stubborn to look it up for years. Like, I've had the same save file going back, I mean, back to my original PSP. I, I think I originally got this almost a decade ago, even. Um... Wait, this looks... Okay, I'm locked up with Crimson. Where the hell is this? Are you a warehouse? I mean, apparently I've been here before. Where... No, I think this is the friggin' hallway with the um, gargoyles or whatever. Huh. Anyway, yeah, I, I remember unlocking a teleport at some point, but then ended up accidentally losing that save file. Yeah, and I think that door over to the right, that must be the, uh, the warehouse that we're looking for here. I know this is a weird ramble, just kind of exploring through this weird game, but it's... If you've never experienced it, it's so worth experiencing. It's a completely unique thing that I have not seen, like, combined in this way ever, frankly. Um, I mean... How many times do you stop your SRPG to just kind of stop and just stare at the oven for a little bit? Just appreciate the PS1 textures, you know? <laughs> it just never comes up. All right, so how could this crafting system have worked? We should probably get to that finally, huh? Let's go over to our save point here and uh, get to our menu, and then it'll finally let us craft stuff. So, all right. So let's say we... Say we want to repair a weapon, that would end up getting rid of a lot of its uh, a lot of its uh, affinities and things. But it makes it better overall. Or let's say you wanted to combine different uh, weapon types. So the way that I think that they could potentially make this work uh, when it comes to uh, to uh, like tactics over reborn or something like that. Like obviously the crafting system was clunky. But what I think they could have done is a sort of breakdown system where you do get a lot of extra weapons, and honestly, if you could break them down or combine them like you could in this, where you just basically take some, like, a crappy version of their, you know, individual parts, like, let's say we take this, like, Langbedev whatever mace thing over here, and we combine the two of them, and we wind up with something, some negative agility hammer knife, 
Uh, yeah, let's see what this makes. Let's see, and then we want to go stick whatever the hell was that just came out of that. Did I just make a scimitar? Is that what that was? Negative three agility, so it looks like the scimitar. Um, so it made a decent physical class weapon type thing. Uh, it doesn't have a handle on it, so we don't know what affinity it has. Yeah, low risk weapon with a uh, kind of crappy strength, but whatever. Um, or kind of crappy attack score, rather. But what can we put it on? Just a bunch of different sword grips. Okay, well, I mean, that's not going to be too amazing. I mean, this one's edged and also kind of piercing. What does edged better? This cross guard seems to work well for that. Um, and let's say... Let's make it fire, I guess. I mean, that's that's a perfectly disappointing weapon. Sure, we'll call it the Disappointer. And then, yeah, you just, like, custom name your weapons. Now, do I expect a system like this? No. But I do think that enough people probably would have complained about the crafting system in TO to potentially cause a total rework to maybe happen. Because, again, they did that for, um, you know, for uh, Legend of Mana when they remade that one. They added a few lines, they added a few little scenes to tie up little loose ends, they spruced up the graphics, and then they're like, okay, fine, look, this crafting system is cool, but really obtuse, and also people don't like it, so we're going to make something more consistent. And from what, from all accounts, people have been, you know, people have been enjoying the hell out of the new crafting system. So what I would expect, um, you know, for, for uh, I think for a better example, we're just going to quickly hop over to T.O., Because, like, do I expect the ability to combine shields? Do I expect the ability to combine weapons? Probably not. Um, would it be cool? Yeah, but, like, would you be able to combine your... Well, actually, you know, in many ways, it did try to be this system, if you think about it. It's just that it was actually guaranteed here, which is just downright strange. So you combine a breastplate and a chain sleeve, and it makes... Um an armor that is objectively worse than... Okay. Huh? Well, that's strange. It's less durability with less protection. I mean, I suppose that checks out. It's You're just taking the sleeves off. You're just putting a breastplate instead of wearing the full chainmail. I mean... Alright. What about affinity-wise? Okay, well... I suppose it's slightly less negative affinity? Anyway... Um, by the way, this is kind of neither here nor there, but I did actually track down a uh, suboptimal save a little while ago that was pretty much where the uh, run left off. Um, I forgot that I, at one point, had basically made a quick save at the start of a fight. Um, kind of not particularly realizing that, uh, well, it, it's, it's a more or less doomed scenario, but I did come close to winning it a couple times, so that's something that may continue at some point. Alrighty, and here we are. So... One thing I kind of just noticed as far as um, sound goes, I apologize if you if you can hear this kind of hum in the background. Um, so I just got all of the old setup that I used to do uh, finally uh, back up here. Um, unfortunately, with this new audio jack, for whatever reason, it's having a little bit of a hum to it. I probably need to put a uh, like a like some ferrite on it or something. I don't know for sure, but um, I didn't realize it coming through until just now. So either way, sorry for that. Anyhow, back to uh, the crafting theory here. So, like, here was the original system in, you know, in TO Remake, right? So, you had your, your weapon system. You kind of had that whole you gotta sacrifice a weapon to make a weapon. You're slapping ingredients on it to make it better kind of thing. Um, t multiple things could potentially be improved about this. So, for one thing, there's the obvious argument of... Why exactly don't enemies use crafted equipment? It's so good. Well, there actually is an in-lore explanation for this, um, in that one thing that oftentimes gets kind of uh, overlooked, because, okay, so if you've ever done, like, a complete no-reload run of this whole thing, you may have potentially realized you probably didn't run full crafted gear. Because uh, oftentimes what happens with the whole save scumming your uh, crafting odds thing is it's not it's not the odds it's the finances the finances hurt a ton so like for example even if you're like let's say you're going to make like the the damask plus one 
Uh, just off the ingredients there, that is going to be about 10 grand, I think it's like 10 to 12 grand per attempt uh, to make this thing. Now, granted, at high stats, that's 100% uh, success chance. Um, if we go to the Enchiridions, you know, most of those are pretty well up there too. So this is this is like with max stats. Once, uh, if like, I'm pretty sure most know this at this point, but like if you've got max stats, uh, or if just like as your stats go up, your crafting odds go up. Um, like for example, by the time that uh, all these guys are maxed out, even something like the Dragon Fang is up to 90% success chance. So. As time goes on, your odds become pretty much guaranteed. Once the number hits red, you're maxed out. Now, strangely enough, in some cases, it will be at 100% success chance and still inexplicably show blacked out number. I That one I couldn't explain. So in theory, if this was better explained, yeah, you know what? That could be a interesting thing. So th there's a couple ways to go about this. For one thing, if it was just better explained that your base stats are what's determining your actual success chance, you know that uh, you get better base stats and you, you know, you you get better odds. You just wait till later to craft that thing, or you risk a chance at failing it now. Okay, that's fine. You know what? On its own, that is perfectly okay as long as it's explained. But again, it's that lack of explanation that oftentimes leads to frustration. Another thing, obviously, is the uh, the whole crafting multiples of a thing thing. Um, because, yeah, there, there's absolutely no reason that you should have to go through this menu 50 freaking thousand times in order to craft a single thing. There's potentially a couple of answers here. So, for one thing, it is possible because it seemed like they cut out a lot of things that could potentially bug the game out either like either for time or limitations or whatever else so it is possible that maybe there was some sort of glitch with the system that they didn't have time to fix because i really don't see why it wouldn't be here otherwise like why you wouldn't be able to uh you know to just craft multiples of a particular thing um so potentially it might just like i would assume that there's no way that multi-crafting isn't going to be a thing in the remake like it has to be there's zero percent chance that that's not going to already be in there um just smoothing this stuff out seems to be one of the first things they do for a lot of these remakes they've been doing um so definitely would practically guarantee that that's going to be there um but in terms of um uh, whether the crafting odds could be there if like if they're keeping the crafting odds the multi-system and an explanation would honestly be enough to just patch this up in its current state whatever it's fine it, it's perfectly fine as it is. And, well, I mean, if if those two things are fixed. However, if they decide not to go about it that way, um, then there is actually potentially a better way to go about it. And actually, a little bit of a side note here. It, I, I don't understand the, like, friggin' Daedalus blade over here to this day. It's just not very good. The odds to make it, even at max stats, are unexpectedly low. Like, honestly this is just better and yet for some reason you need <laughs> you need three very hard to find items as well as uh, a low percent success chance to make it it's it's very very strange um any darn ways um what was i getting at here so okay however there, there is a better potential version i think so you can kind of tweak a sort of middle ground between this, the Vagrant Story system, and the One Vision system. See, I think they had the right idea right here, uh, where they had certain situations where you're required to sacrifice other pieces of equipment, and basically just forcing somebody to pay the upfront uh, money cost rather than, you know, the money and resource cost rather than deal with this percentage chance thing. However, this leads to another obvious uh, obvious issue where that suddenly devalues anything in the steel tree. See, steel, by and large, yeah, you can absolutely get, get by without it just fine. However, if you do actually have somebody dedicated to it, you end up just absolutely swimming in these materials to the point where that uh, later on in the game, you can just craft stuff willy-nilly with relative abandon. Um, like, personally, I like running one or two units with steel on the team and, you know, just for casual playthroughs and you just end up having a bunch of uh, woots and platinum and whatever else, um, just around in abundance by the end of it. Now, if, so basically the, the way that this could theoretically work, um, is that we essentially go over to, uh, go over to this, right? 
inferior ore, you just can't buy it anymore, right? Copper, whatever, you can you can presumably buy that just fine. They have a lot of stuff that uses copper, but you just can't buy inferior ore anymore. You have to have either monsters that you've sold, or you have to have uh, units stealing them, or you have to find them in maps. So you can't mass craft stuff, but you essentially kind of give extra value to the steel table without having to redo the entire thief uh, uh, thief system. Um, you essentially allow for those pickups on the ground to suddenly matter a decent bit more. And, you know, then suddenly you have a far more limited amount of inferior ores instead of constantly just going and buying 99 of them. Which, by the way, if we're sticking with the original system, I really hope they increase the item cap to 999 uh, for inferior ore. Because there's really just no reason after repeatedly go back and rebuy 99 of them. It's just it's just awkward. Because you usually do need several hundred of them to uh, to actually equip your team later on in the game. So it's just kind of a needless back and forth. Anyway, so so okay, you have uh, you have a system like that, but then you also have a breakdown system. So like let's say you get a lot of your a lot of uh, different, uh, you know, weapons in the late game and stuff like that. And instead of just going and mass selling them like you usually do, just chuck them all to the store. Instead, you have a breakdown mechanic. You essentially can break them down into uh, into ingots or whatever else or into most of the components they use to craft a new one instead of, you know, instead of something else. It's so like, for example, like with worm scale uh, sleeves here. Like, let's say, what if you could just break these down into just worm scales and whiskers or something like that, you know? Like, that you have some of these pieces of equipment, but you can break them down more. It would be nice to also see the AI occasionally having a low percentage chance to roll plus one equipment. I mean, honestly, I don't hate the plus one system. It Sure, it could have used more penalties, but I feel like the main thing it was lacking was just more world presence. Like, you saw stuff from the Cudgel and Sheridian everywhere. How did they get a hold of those? Um, you see stuff from the Whip and Sheridian all over the place. How did they get a hold of those? You see, you know, nothing from Ranged Weapons 2 that's just available at the store. Okay, you actually see some stuff from Ranged Weapons 2. I take that back. Uh, hang on, where was it? No, go back to Ranged Weapons 2. You see the Balder blowgun and you see the Damask blowgun, but you don't see, like, the silencing shortbow or the silencing crossbow or the upgraded uh, thrown weapons or stuff like that. Um... Which, again, they have the neat little tidbit in there that your upgraded thrown weapons are upgraded using the items that you get from uh, uh, from uh, selling monsters. Uh, so, again, the, the options were there. It's like they took an extra step and just gave you those inferior ores as a way for people to grind out if they wanted to, but unfortunately made it way too uh, enticing for people. So I feel like if they just got rid of that item entirely, it would give the rest of this a lot more, you know, a lot more merit. I mean, hell, if they just, if all they wanted to do was get rid of inferior ore just by itself, um, in many ways that would make this whole crafting system make more sense. Then you just boost the success chance and there you go. Done deal. Also, these uh, these crafting books, I feel like a lot of it definitely is um, definitely going to need a little bit more going on here. For one thing, I find it hilarious that the crossbow is, of course, you know, the, gr the greatest weapon in the game. Um, but yeah, so the, I feel like, quote unquote, the crossbow, instead of being Damask plus one, this unit needed to be something with a cooler name, like a weapon this good out of me, out of something this generic with these basic ingredients. I mean, this had to be, this can't just be plus one. It, it's just, it's so good. It literally has its own crafting book. Um, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, what else? Da, 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 da. By the way, for, for anyone who missed it, the reason that I said that, Crossbow Plus One is by far the strongest weapon in the game. Uh, like, in a multiplayer setting, if you do an AI tournament, the, the current winning team is literally just uh, bun like 10 units with uh, Damascus Plus One crossbows, and then a couple units for support. <laughs> it is the slowest nonsense you'll ever see. Um, what was I looking for here? Uh, yeah, as far as other stuff they could redo for the for the crafting stuff, um, definitely want to redo body armor and armor craft. So armor craft, okay, that's fine. It feels a little weird that the worm scale stuff is just something that's so common later on in the game when you have to go through so much effort to craft it. Like same thing again with the worm scale helm, you have to go through all this effort to get all these rare items, and you can just find these. So 
feels a little weird there, so maybe do something about that. Uh, body armor on Sheridian needs a different name because that is that's not that's not body armor. Uh, that is, those are robes. I mean, yeah, it's technically armor, kind of, but also those are robes, so you know, fix that. Um, arm guard is just dropped all over the place, so is kind of leg guard. Hopefully, they give give these pants more of a more of a thing to actually work with. I mean, it really would not take too many tweaks in either direction to uh, you know to make an improvement on that system. I, I really like the idea of a breakdown system personally, um, but uh, either way, that uh, that kind of is how it is. So. You know, would love to hear what you guys think on all that. Um, let me know. Um, you know, let me know if uh, if you agree, disagree, or whatever else. You guys have a good one. Take care, and uh, and yeah, uh, I'll see you in the next one of these things. Later.